what is the power of the vouch when someone vouches for you out mm. there? Uh, it's, it's sometimes it's hard to get from people, but it's basically somebody putting their name on the line, basically saying this guy is funny or this guy's cool. Now, broadcasting live from the podcast palace on Park Street in beautiful and dangerous Clearwater, Florida, it's the Comedians on Cork podcast. And now, here are your hosts, Tony God and Pat Largo. Hey, season two of the Comedians on Cork podcast. I got Tony God right here. My name is Pat Largo. Uh, we have another great one today from uh, 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 Los Angeles, Mr. E.L. Smith, a former Floridian, and now he's out west. And uh, But first off, big shouts out to our girl, Julie Drolls Hagen of uh, Century 21, right here in beautiful Clearwater, Florida. She's getting you deals, buying and selling. You can contact her at 727. 727- 902-9233 or julie at floridabeachbusiness.com floridabeachbusiness.com and you can get us anywhere you want at comediansuncorked.com at comediansuncorked on instagram uh facebook and of course our youtube channel lots of things there including clips from all of our uh past and uh, uh future uh interviews such as today with uh, el smith don't forget to click that subscribe button we really appreciate that uh this is a fun one man Yes, E.L. Smith, yeah. we have him <laughs> on, on our Zoom interview today. E.L. Smith, you may have already seen him in commercials, uh, like Ship. Thank you. Oh. Mm. You got this. Whoa, I, I don't got this. Yes. Or you may have caught him on stage, especially if you're in L.A. You may have caught him at the Laugh Factory uh, many a times. Another day I went in a store with my four-year-old, and I don't know if it's ever happened to you, but I, she picked up a Barbie doll. And i like, first of all, put that back, and that's not Princess Tiana. No more white naked Barbies in my house. <laughs> I'm not buying that. So I buy my items. I get in the car. I'm 12 miles down the road. I look in the back seat. My daughter has the Barbie doll in the back seat. It's like, oh, my God. Like, that kind of sucks for you, Target, because I'm 12 miles down the road. I'm not turning back. You need to up the security game. <laughs> Let a four-year-old get over and you need like new manuals or something like that, right? But the next week she tried to do the same thing. She tried to pick up the same Barbie doll. I had to sit her down like, Kayla, sweetheart, you can't do that. You can't do that. But here, take these beat headphones by Dr. Dre. Hold that. Those are $300. Hold that. See, we can do this. Team Smith, let's go. She's cool though. She got me this Apple Watch. So she's good. She's good. She has a certain set of skills. Welcome to the show, El. How's it going, man? Woo! All right, all right. what's going on, man? I'm, I'm still in it. I'm still. No, <laughs> still... you are still in it. <laughs> I, I, my first question though is, where's your hair, man? Oh man, I a couple of job things. Like I had an audition and I took it out one time and it was like, like that. And I was like, there's no way they're going to go for that. So I just went ahead and just cut it. But you know, during the pandemic, you know, everybody was just. I wasn't getting a haircut. And, you know, I'm older now and I still have my hair. So I was like, let me just see what this can do before one day I wake up and I have to get the Michael Jordan and I have no choice. So oh, man. Well, I'll, I'll let you in on a little <laughs> secret. I'm actually going for to get a, my cut this week. too. It? <laughs> yeah. like, it's everywhere right now. OK. OK. Oh. See, yeah. Yeah. So like, I like let me do it before, you know, one day I, I don't have a choice. So I had a choice to yeah. like grow it. But. I, I'm, I'm too old for it now, so I should have did that earlier, but it's all good. Yeah, man. well, I got to tell you, so you're, tell us a little bit, because we broadcast mm-hmm. out of the uh, the podcast Palace on Park Street here in Clearwater, Florida. Uh, okay. We've been here a long time in Florida. Uh, 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 Tony's a native. Uh, I'm close. He is. Now, are you a native Floridian? I am. I'm from West Palm Beach, uh, West Wonderful. Palm Beach, Florida. Okay, mm-hmm. cool, man. And you were there yeah. uh, how long before you went out to uh to make the, the trek to LA? Uh so I started in I started in Tallahassee. Um yeah. I went to Florida State and I did I uh, used to host at a comedy zone. I ended up moving to Tampa. That's where I met Tony. Mm-hmm. Um and then started, you know, asking them for spots <laughs> at the, at the Tampa Improv. Yeah. Improv. yeah, so I started doing a little bit there and you know, um I met I met someone and I ended up moving to North Carolina. I didn't do it when I was in North Carolina for like three years and I still had like that itch, but it was actually less opportunity than Florida in North Carolina, if you ask my opinion. So it kind of got discouraged. And then um, the opportunity came to to move to Los Angeles. And I was like, you know what, man, let's let's do it. Let's try it. So I just I went out, I moved out here 2016 
Um, I didn't know anybody. Uh, I had one cousin out here, didn't know anybody in comedy, and just I just started hitting the ground, just running. Yeah. So, so where, and, did um, start out, where did you go first? Like when you went out to LA, did you, did you go to like a small room or just try to what? fill out the scene? I filled out the scene. I did a couple of open mics, but I knew a booker from a festival I did before who actually uh, vouched for me at the Ice House in Pasadena. Oh, wow. And uh, so the the booker saw it. Um, I didn't even know who he, what he looks like. He was in the audience because he asked, can you do like 10 minutes clean? And I was like, of course. And um, he saw it. And ever since then, he started booking me at the Ice House. And then they let you record a video. So I just started sending that video out and just started hanging out at the store. Um, they have an open mic there on Mondays where they only pick 16 people mm-hmm. and, um, maybe like 150 people come and sign a piece of paper, like every Monday. <laughs> so and after a year, I started getting on the mic thing and then kind of like, um, the pandemic happened. So that kind of been shut down, but, um, our opportunity came at the, at the laugh factory when the pandemic was happening, they were doing this YouTube thing where they were like film, uh, comedians and, um, no one was in the audience and they wanted to do like 20 minutes. And a lot of their regular guys that they bought didn't want to do that. Phil didn't even feel like, but I was like, I'll do it. So I don't care. I'll do it. Was it was just like an empty room. It was an empty room and they put it on oh. YouTube, but you're mm-hmm. telling jokes to an empty room for like 20 minutes, like yeah. nothing. So, but it's like, it's hey. like open mic. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <It's> basically. <laughs> so I, I did that. I met a couple of people, started hanging out. Um, and this is a cool story. Um, one time I was hanging out there and um, something happened. Well, somebody left but didn't show up. And like the assistant manager came up to me and she was like, you, you want to go on and close out the show on a Friday? It was a Friday night. And like after Dane Cook and out and like, do you want to do 20? Can you do 20 minutes? And I was like, yeah, of course. <laughs> so, wow. so I went up there and um, that show was great. It was amazing. <laughs> it was a packed house and they saw it. And then ever since then, Sometimes they put me on stuff. I'll, I'll put it like that. <laughs> so, so yeah. So Dane Cook opened for you. Uh, if you want to say that. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I, don't I, w- I will say that, say that EL. <laughs> so, so now, like, uh, now, are you a regular at a few rooms or do you have different rooms that you get into on a regular basis? Um, I could probably get on a couple of local shows here and there. Um, i regularly do things kind of like at the laugh factory but as another club here called haha ha, that i kind of do things for too um yeah. hollywood hollywood improv still trying to work my way in and comedy store trying to as well but it's a couple of rooms it's it's, it's always a lot of places uh people yeah. put on their own shows and stuff like that so yeah tell, tell jack asadorian at a haha ha that we say hi Oh, Jack. Oh, yeah. I'll, yeah, I'll let him know. That's our guy out there. Him, I, I don't know if his parents still own it, but or he took it over. But he, yeah, it's a whole uh, West Hollywood feel out there. Yeah, yeah. It's all of them. It's his mom and, and it's him. I think his mom and, and him, him. He does like the bookings and stuff for it. Yeah. So that no, was a cool yeah. spot. Dude, I mean, during the pandemic, he was like like bartending, getting tickets, comedy, running. I mean, he was yeah. wearing every hat. So I respect. I'm like, damn, that's that's. That's a guy who wants to keep that in the family and just keep that business going. It was pretty cool to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he wears a lot of hats there, and he, yeah. and he's, and he does comedy, too, as well. So mm-hmm. so, so uh, tell me, like, uh, just to, to follow up on something you mentioned earlier, mm-hmm. just so the audience understands, what is the power of the vouch when someone vouches for you out mm. there? Uh it's it's sometimes it's hard to get from people, but it's basically somebody putting their name on the line, basically saying this guy is funny or this guy's clean or this guy is not going to bring down your club or make you lose money or he's not going to say anything crazy or outrageous. And I'm putting my reputation on the line for this person. So it's almost like and I find that when you when people vouch for you, it's almost either they really like you when they think you're really funny or it's like almost what can you do for me almost? Can you get me, if, if I vouch for you here and I know you play here, can you get me into there and I'll get you into there? It's kind of like trade. Transactional, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's only those two things. People just don't do it out the goodness of their heart. It's always something, so. Business, always That's business. That's LA right there. That's LA in a nutshell right yeah. there. <laughs> it is, it is. Cause there's so many people out here trying to do comedy. So it's, it's yeah. everybody, even people who want to be actors, mm-hmm. their agents tell them, oh, get into comedy. And so, and like when New Year's happens, I remember one time I was here for New Year, like around, you know, New Year's resolution. 
and 150 people uh, was well over 200 <laughs> at one point. So, yeah. Well, speaking of now, how, what got you into comedy? Like what, what brought you to that point that you wanted to do it in the first place? Um, well, I was in, I was in West Palm and I was going to a community college and um, it always starts with a girl, right? All, all good stories. <laughs> so I was, I, I had a crush on this girl and I was thinking of something fun I can do besides the movies and all that type of jazz. So I saw D.L. Hughley was at the comedy corner oh. and, I, and West Palm. So I bought two tickets. I went to her, I asked her, of course she said no. <laughs> so mm. <laughs> I ended up going with this girl that was a friend of mine and we ended up sitting in the front row. And I didn't know you're not supposed to sit in the front row at the DL Hughley yeah, uh, yeah. show. <laughs> and I had braces, braces at the time. And he just, he just picked off everybody in the front row. Yeah. And I was like, all right, that's what I want to do. <laughs> yeah, he's ruthless, man. It's like, <laughs> so you see yeah. that. So that, that's what got, that's what kind of initiated the spark then. Yeah, yeah. Then I always been like funny around family and stuff like that. And I was like, all right, I want to, I want to do this. So when I, I moved to Tallahassee, just, just got into it. And a uh, funny story: when I moved up there, uh, I met uh, Roy Wood Jr. He was yeah. still, uh, yeah. he, he was still in college there. He was like, I think he only had one more year. So I met him like at a, at an open mic or something like that. And I told him because he was super funny that I want to be a comedian. And he started telling me things and giving me advice and he let me do a couple of shows for him and then he actually got me into the the comedy zone right before he left at the at the one in Tallahassee so yeah that's right yeah because you went to FSU I know he was uh uh, I think he did Florida A&M yeah he went to Florida A&M yeah yeah, and that's so cool I was thinking about Roy when he was in that area I was thinking about that because he was doing like radio in Birmingham yeah, and he's from Birmingham. He would drive bus back and forth to do shows in Florida. Like he just has outrageous stories. Yeah, I, and I can tell you firsthand that guy was one hundred percent dedicated to doing comedy. Like yeah. that's what he wanted to do. But me, I was young, and I didn't think you know I, I was doing it as a hobby, and it was fun. I was making a little bit of money. I didn't think anybody would blow up or become huge out of Tallahassee, Florida. So I didn't really keep that like connection or that real. Friend, like I didn't really blossom that friendship. I was like, oh, this guy just helping me out. But then, you know, next thing I knew, he just was doing this, that, that, and that. And so now he's like super big. So yeah. sometimes he he answered my text. <laughs> I'm in the clinic on this now. He's like, here's how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he was dedicated with it. Super dedicated. Well, now, um, do you like model yourself after anybody in particular, like writing style or process? No, um, I, I look at everyone, even like everyone that's successful, even people that I may not think is funny, just to see like what do people like about this person. Yeah. And then it's a it's a course. There's a lot of people that I I personally like their style and I like their jokes because it's almost smart humor, like Bill Burr, Daniel Tosh, yeah. um, Ch- Chappelle, old old school stuff, Kevin Hart, um, Patrice, and so I, I I watch those things over and over again. But I try to like just have my own style i'll just be myself honestly i don't i don't you got your try own to flavor you know it's like you, yeah. you really do have a you know your own little distinct flavor your own persona going um, yeah you got to you got yeah. to you got to and so. you talk a lot about your family and the kids and stuff now i do is how do they feel about that <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my youngest daughter, that's, that's the one I used to have the most jokes about. And uh, one time I remember I was at some event, it was like clean. And so she was an audience and I started telling this joke about her and she got up and she started running. She ran out the place because she was crying because I was mentioning her name, but she's cool with it now. Um, she's cool with it now. I started, I, I always try to stay um, more on the clean side just because it's just more opportunity and just doors just open up quicker and stuff like that like i um i just recently i was just in florida i just did on um, lane university um right there in boca raton so um yeah 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 so um yeah so i just try to stay more on the cleaner side so yeah so you're not doing mm-hmm. chocolate sundays <laughs> i you did chocolate Hollywood, you, better, you better, get, <laughs> better get on it man <laughs> i did chocolate sundays i did it twice you do it? it was good yeah, it was good. It was good. The last oh, time cool. was okay. Yeah. It, was, it was good. So I got to I gotta hit them up to see how can I get into their rotation. But Chocolate Sundays, believe it or not, is it's a really good show. It's not as crazy 
Because I know you're from Florida, so you remember like Apollo Nights and some of those places. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so that's that's like a legendary night out there now. Oh, it always stay packed because they um as long as you reserve, the tickets are free. And it's like a two drink minimum. You can get two. So it's always packed well, every know, Sunday. Well, can can you tell tell the audience that don't under that don't know what we're talking about what chocolate Sunday is? Uh so it's like uh it's supposed to be urban, but I won't even call it urban anymore because the crowd is so mixed. But it's it's a show on at Sundays at the Laugh Factory. Um, it's started by this guy named Pookie, and of course <laughs> everybody. Of course, it was started by somebody yeah. named Pookie. But uh, <laughs> it wouldn't be Chocolate Sundays if it wasn't. Um, <laughs> this day in history. Yeah, I know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, it's not going to be Alistair. You know, it's going to be Pookie or Ray Ray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, all 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 big name comments went through there as like Kevin Hart, Cat Williams, all those people, and then people pop up there like all the time. Like I want to say, I want to say this past November, uh, Kevin Hart popped up oh, yeah. and did like and did like fifteen minutes, and then you know got in his chauffeur car and, and left. Sure. <laughs> wow! The way you should. The life. Right. The way you should. That's how you live the show. Right? Yeah, yeah. Now, with someone yeah. like a, like a name like that that comes in, like I assume there's a, a, a you know a pecking order. Does he just kind of like Chappelle it? Does he come in? Everyone clears the way, and then he does his thing and he leaves. Or how does that work when something like that comes in? Um, I only seen a couple of these people pop in sometimes, it, oh. which is really cool. Is what they do is um, so he came in at the very last of the show, so he didn't like bump anybody or anything oh, okay. like that, which cool. is which is cool. And you know, if it's Kevin Hart, people are going to stay. So he did like fifteen minutes. People stayed, and it was funny. And the other other like the month before that, I saw Dave Chappelle, and um, he came to the store, and he went on after everybody went on, so he didn't bump anybody. But he did like an hour and a half and yeah. people, people stayed. Like the show ended at 11. He came on, did an hour and a half and people, like I only saw like maybe three people walk out. Wow. So, See that? Yeah. yeah. I, I wonder if that's a little something new for Dave because we talked about this on one of our shows in, in season one that Dave was kind of getting that way in the last yeah. couple of years or so where he would go on and do hour and a half, two or more and bump everybody in the room like nobody oh, wow. like he, would, he would just do and but no one was saying anything because it's dave Chappelle. but one of my favorite stories yeah. was he was doing it at a club in new york and he was just doing he was just having a drink and just smoking the cigarettes and going on bumping every and i was gonna <laughs> say hey dave dave can, can we go now no one's saying it but they said yeah. that Chappelle looked to his right and he saw dave attell off stage and he said mm -hmm. hey dave did you go on yet and dave shook his head no and he goes, ladies and gentlemen, I'm done. Please welcome David Tell. So that's the kind of respect he had for David Tell. But he was just yeah, bumping yeah. everybody. So it's good to know now he's kind of just not bumping anybody. And yeah, he didn't. No, yeah, he didn't bump anybody. It was that's after cool. the show. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, well, have you uh, have you had any encounters like that where you've had to to follow uh, a a big name that just came in and just destroyed the room, and then you're like, okay, do I need to go? Um, one time, one time when I first moved here, um, I was at the Ice House and Arsenio Hall popped up. <laughs> oh, <laughs> he, man. Nice. Wow. Yeah, he popped up. Uh, he came with this little notepad. And of course, when they said Arsenio Hall, everybody lost it. He did his, his little new jokes. People laughed. They had a good time. And after that, he left like they usually do. And then after that, they're like, oh, here comes E.L. Smith. <laughs> and E.L. <laughs> that's, right. that's right. <laughs> <laughs> See, so, that's when yeah. they're supposed to use the intro. And by the way, uh, Dane Cook featured for this next comedian, E.L. Smith. <laughs> it was way before that Dane Cook incident. Oh, but it, it, the Ice House is a really good club, so it, it went good. It wasn't. It wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. So, no. But, yeah, that happened before. Now, you didn't really plan on um, becoming a comedian initially. Now, yeah. what about the acting? Because now you're, you're doing commercials. Like, you, do, you did uh, yeah. a national spot for, uh, for Shipped. What was, that, what was that experience like, and what's going on with that? Um, so, I was at a comedy club uh, right outside of L.A., Ventura, Ventura Comedy Club. Um, and I did a show and 
this lady was in the audience and she was a commercial agent and she just approached me afterwards and uh, she's like, yeah, you want to do acting? And I'm like, of course, because anything to make money in L.A. and to stay out here. So I started doing that. She just started sending me on auditions and I've been on so many, but I booked the ship one, which was pretty cool. That was an all day thing. And I recently just bought one for um, Johnsonville Sausage that I got to go do tomorrow. Oh, nice. So that's okay. Congrats, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm excited about that. So um, that one. And then I got some more auditions in the work. I just did one for um, a TV show that's going to be on Amazon. Uh, that's all I can say about it. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, hopefully yeah. I get I've done a few of those. I, I can't talk about it, really, man. <laughs> I don't want to get in Great trouble. Audition, but, I can't say nothing. <laughs> hopefully, I get it. So if I yeah, get yeah, it, yeah, no, good luck. Now, being in LA and being approached by a lady asking if you want to act, did did any at any given time did you think it was might be porn? <laughs> um, pays well. Nah, she she looked pretty legit. Her car was pretty legit. So okay. it, it, it the all, car card looks legit. legit. <laughs> yeah, it all it all old card out. trick. She has it, a it all website. <laughs> 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 so now so now you're uh you're getting more into the acting then is this are you like um like taking other measures as far as like uh, uh studying or doing uh, workshops or anything like that no i mean i took one acting class but i'll be honest with you if you go if you've been on stage like you guys if you've been on stage and you talk with people i mean you can act it's just pretending and just tapping into whatever they want you to tap into so it, 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 I don't think it's that hard. Yeah. Um, like I said, I, I just took one acting class. It's to like say I took an acting class, but if you're if you're a comedian, you can you can act. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're basically doing that. You're you're doing a performance yeah. every night. So you're you know you're written you've written the script. Yeah, and you're acting out the parts. You know, depending on what kind of comic you are. But like I see your comedy, you're physical. Mm -hmm. You act out the characters. You know the roles. Yeah in your in your bits you know if it's your family mm -hmm. you're acting out your daughter you're acting out yourself so you yeah. find it so you so you're fairly comfortable with acting then you feel comfortable with it oh yeah yeah too and also if you did comedy you can't be like uncomfortable doing anything in front of people like especially if this is what you want to do it's like just just do it <laughs> it's, just, it's not gonna hurt you so it's not gonna like harm you it's no like physical pain so just do it. And then once they put that that do that dollar amount in front of you, you'd be like, uh, I figure it out. <laughs> right. You make it work. Now, what I know you've been doing comedy longer, but right now, have you been bitten by the acting bug? Like, like, are you liking one or loving one more than the other right now? Um, I like comedy. I, I mean, I love comedy. Acting is cool. Um, I think it'll open more doors to do comedy. So, I mean, I'm not in love with acting. I mean, I'll do it, of course, but I'm, I'm more so want to be like a, uh, I want to write for like late night or something like that and then have like a, a big enough name where I can be like, oh, I'm, I'm coming to the Denver Improv or the Tampa Improv this weekend. And people, enough people know me to where I can like pat the room and stuff like that. Yeah. But um, acting. Have you been hmm? submitting like, uh, like writing or anything like that? Or are you working on that angle? I'm working on that angle. I haven't really submitted, submit. I submitted to some things like NBC has this program. I, they stopped doing it since the pandemic where they used to do like a workshop. Yeah. But um, I know I'm, I'm trying to, yeah, yeah. So I'm trying to like meet more people in that space, but I'm not turned off towards acting just because if I act in enough stuff or enough bigger stuff, I can basically use that to do whatever or, or get into whatever I want. And then acting's not bad. It's, it's not like it's terrible. Or not, I don't know, I dread going doing it. So I mean it's fun yeah, to do. It's fun. I, I love it, man. Yeah. I love doing it. Yeah. So so now well, have you considered like writing something for yourself and uh and uh, uh like the short film or something to that effect? Um I haven't um and I haven't even thought about that because I don't I gotta probably figure out where to put it in time wise, just because just trying to I usually go out. I haven't been out this week, but I usually go out like almost every night with the comedy. Just if I'm if I'm not hanging out or on a show, I'm trying to like network or, or meet people. I just just have my face out there. Then I still, you know, I got to pick up my daughter from school, and then I still got the little day job thing that I do. So it's, that's a lot to balance. Yeah, it's a lot, and right now I'm in the process of moving. Um, oh wow! 
yeah, so it's it's always it's always go go go. So I don't know if I it can fit that in, but possibly we'll see. We'll see. Wow, I just yeah, it's just a lot going on, man. Well, what is well? So how does now you've got a lot going on right now, but what does it look mm-hmm. like in the future? Like what's the what's the end goal that you see getting to? Uh, is there a succession of, uh, of smaller goals or is there just one ultimate goal that you want to reach as far as uh, the entertainment itself, like encompassing the comedy, the acting, the writing? Um, right now, it's probably the small goals, like become more of a regular at some of these comedy clubs. Um, do that. Also, I, I have a college agent, so to do a little bit more colleges as well and just continue like to build up or, or uh, attempt to build up the social media just so because i know that can just open doors i really don't care for social media but yeah. It, it, yeah. it's necessary to like yes. do a, a lot of things a lot of things so just build that up keep you know getting on so many shows and just getting in front of the right people um a lot of times in la it's I, this is being seen by the right right person the right agency. Some of these agencies, they still go out to comedy clubs or they hear about you through this thing or that thing. So the more you're out there, the more you can, you know, somebody can tap into like, oh, have you seen this person? Or you heard this person? Oh, or they just happen to see you. Like, I, I tell you not, and I'm not even exaggerating. If if somebody from like UTA or a CAA was in the audience that night that I went on after the day, out uh, at the bank up, it, something would have happened because that show was like awesome <laughs> yeah awesome. yeah yeah but nobody was there so just you just got to be out so be out and be around and, and also continue just to work on yourself and get bigger and stuff because when people see that you're also serious about it yourself they kind of like tag yeah. on to that and and real quick you may have said before how, how long you've been in, in in california now uh since 2016 Okay, so so especially now getting out because I know all my friends out there in LA, like I said, Jack and other people, Chris Cope, other friends of mine of the show and mm-hmm. everything. You know, you had all this downtime with with COVID and and you know just not being able to to get out and do comedy. Did that get you down a little bit because you were doing your thing out there and all of a sudden the doors with for everyone's job was shut basically. I would say yeah and no. Um, it was a lot of Zoom shows, which was okay. I didn't mind. Um, I would say yeah and no and. Um, yeah, because things were starting, believe it or not, things were starting to like roll a little bit better for me. Like I, I just did chocolate some days and they were really good. Um, I got pit at the comedy store like three times in the last two months. And so that was looking good. And then all of a sudden the pandemic happened and then all that stuff kind of like shut yeah. down. So that was the bad part. Um, I knew comedy will eventually come back just because it's, it, everything's going to come back eventually. I mean, yeah. this is like, so just if you want to quit, that means you, you just, you just, that's just your way out. But it's, everything was going to eventually come out. It's just this time to like take a break, write more. And then also I liked it too, because I didn't have to, it gave me a chance to slow down. I didn't have to go out almost every night or right. anything like that. Or, um, my phone might call. So I didn't have to go out almost every night. I can slow down. I can think about things. I can I can write more. I can watch comedy specials. I can still do things in comedy, but I don't have to like put in all that work. All this because some of these places before the uh, pandemic, places was like the stores stay open to like two in the morning. Yeah. So, oh yeah, yeah. And after a while, it, it I don't care who you are. After a while of going out or networking or being on shows just hitting hard 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 it kind of like drains on you a little bit so yeah yeah, wears you down yeah Yeah. so especially when you're not making especially when you're not making any headway so like like the hollywood improv they have a show uh a a mic show where they pull names out of bucket and it would be so many people they would turn people away so they capped it at 75 people and so they'll pull names out of bucket and you can be there for the whole two hours and not have your name pulled (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and I will see people leave that upset, mad, angry. Yeah, I've had, I've, I've seen that myself. Well, that's happened over at the Tampion problem. We was over okay. there and I yeah. was doing it. And there's people would get mad because, hey, look, you know, we only have so many slots and we're doing them random. Yeah, so it's like, yeah. yeah that's that, how it is, man. Yeah. So, you got to have a story to tell. No, nothing comes easy though, especially in entertainment, especially in comedy. Um, I like I bought Kevin Hart's book before. Um, 
and I listen to it on Audible. I just listened to Will Smith's book on Audible. Um, you'd be surprised at how many like things that came in, roadblocks that came in anyway, like huge, like I should quit moments came to their, came, you know, to them and they still stuck it out. So if you're complaining about not getting paid at open mic, then you're not going to make it. So yeah, that's part of, that's part of uh, the growth process, you know, being able mm -hmm. to deal with that rejection or cancel because you're going to, you're going to get double booked at some point you're going to get canceled you know your show's yeah. going to get you know it's like you're going to get yeah. uh, taken off the schedule so that's yeah. not learning <laughs> that's it i just lost that as a, a feature at a place in, in florida here a couple weeks ago the guy emails me I, like the week of the show he goes hey man my bad i forgot that the guy that you're opening for he, he's bringing his own feature and i said well oh jesus oh wow. okay i mean it wasn't i had some other shows coming up and some headline gigs but i'm like oh damn mm -hmm. but um I don't know, man. But like you said, though, it's good to be strong in the head. I'm still I've been doing this for a long time. I was in, you know, different entertainment for years, but it's still tough for me. I, I do want to give up sometimes on stuff just in general, because it's tough to yeah. hear those stories. Like you said, Will Smith and Kevin Hart, like he says before shows, everybody wants to be famous, but nobody wants to put the work in. And it's yeah. true. I hear that what he says. And I'm like, but then you hear some of those roadblocks like The Rock. The Rock has one of those big Ooh. roadblock stories. He thought he was going to be in the NFL back in the day. He yeah, got yeah, cut by yeah. the, the Canadian Football League. <laughs> and, yeah. you know, uh, he has a great story about the amount of dollars, like five or seven, whatever his production company is called. It's like called mm -hmm. seven dollars and something or seven fifty. That's how much money he had in his pocket. And that's why he wow. called it that production company. And, and he, he only had it. He only, only had that much because that's all the guy had when he robbed him. That's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and it's just it's just stories like that the that make monks. the rock but that's what he went down to that's when he knew his wrestling was in his future that's right have to go back to, and he didn't <laughs> want to be and one he and he beat some ass right I'm and doing that it's, robbed the fans with 50 dollar tickets now i got 50 in jeez. <laughs> it's definitely like that <laughs> um, right down the yeah block. yeah same kevin, robbery more money kevin hart has a, a good story um so when he was traveling up to new york he finally got the opportunity to do something at the comedy strip um and this guy named Dave Lucian, who used to book it, he, he discovered like Eddie Murphy, Jerry Seinfeld. So Kevin Hart says, and this is Kevin Hart never written his own book. So he said he goes there, he does his thing. He said he did good. And he said the booker called him in the back and told him, I don't think this is for you. Hmm. I've seen comedians and I don't think you, this is, this is it for you. And he said he was so hurt about that and he said he never played that club and he talked to this other comedian and the guy said that's only one person one club just keep doing your thing so yeah isn't that something so, that's just crazy. yeah so yeah well el uh smith listen thanks for taking time out i know you're a few oh, yeah. behind us there in la and um real quick how can people get a hold of you social media wise website wise um uh, el smith comedy so if you type in el smith comedy it's, it's on my shirt here el smith comedy yeah. um Everything will pop up. Social media. I'm mostly on Instagram. I had all the social medias, but EO Smith Comedy and website, all that cool stuff will pop up. So, well, let me ask you this: uh, Where are you at next? Oh man, where am I at next? I have this commercial tomorrow. Other than that, I'm in the process of moving, so I haven't really hit anything hard yet. But probably next month, I'll probably be doing some things. Um, I know I'm at Haha -Ha, um, in February. And I'll probably line up some more things and we'll just go from there, man. One day at a time. <laughs> awesome, man. Awesome. Cool. E. L. Yeah. Smith in L.A. We really appreciate it, man. The best of luck mm -hmm. to you. And as more things pop down this uh, the rest of this year, we'll hope to get you back on the Comedians Uncorked podcast. All right. OK. All right. Sounds like a plan, guys. Thanks for having me, man. Tony. It's good Bye to see you again, good man. Good seeing you, man. Thanks yes, so much. Yes, definitely. All right. Bye, brother. Now, we hope you enjoyed that great interview with E.L. Smith from L.A. So for Tony God, my name is Pat Largo. Thank you for catching again uh, Comedians on Cork podcast on Spotify, all the platforms, uh, our YouTube channel. Check it out for the uh, clips of the show and these interviews and way more. And of course, hit that subscribe button. You get us at Comedians on Cork, the Facebook page and Comedians on Cork dot com. Thank you again, Julie Drollshagen of FloridaBeachBusiness.com. Get her for your real estate needs, Century 21 at 727-902-9233. Again, for Tony God, my name is Pat Largo. Laugh, you deserve it. We'll talk at you next time on the Comedians and Cork Podcast.